everyone. Welcome to this uh, free open house session. Before starting, let's make a quick audio and video check. Do you see my screen? I'm showing four pairs, eight charts, and do you hear my well? If you would like to type a yes or a why, just to know that everything is okay on your side. So you can use either the questions area of GoToWebinar or for the Max members, the Max chat room. Ah, okay, a lot of yes. Richard, Sam, Hank, King, Charles, Ralph, John, Rodolfo. Okay, thank you much. Jeremy, so welcome to all of you. So as you know, the non-farm payroll is one of the most difficult news to, to analyze and possibly to, to trade. And uh, because, in fact, the numbers which is released on the first Friday of each month, generally the first Friday of each month, uh, can be difficultly uh, anticipated still. And um, it, it is also combined with the unemployment rate. And so it's the combination of both which make the news in reality. And this is why the non-farm payroll, uh, after the news reports have been released, uh, do not often provide a good opportunity to trade. Indeed, in order to have what I call sustainable and um, directional movement uh, in many pairs, by the way, we need to have the two news in agreement. And we need also to have um, an important deviation with the non-farm payroll. An important deviation is a minimum deviation of 40 to 50K. This means that if we have a positive, big positive deviation for the non-farm payroll, we will need to see a smaller number for the unemployment rate. On the contrary, if we see a negative deviation by 40 or 50K, we will need to see a higher number for the unemployment rate. Both are in the opposite direction, if I may say uh, that way. In these two situations, we will have most of the time, I would say 99.99% .99 of the case, nice movements, we can profit from these movements. Otherwise, it is a non-trading session. So when we have the two numbers not giving uh, either an important deviation and the, the unemployment rate not in agreement or small deviation, so we have no good opportunity. The movement generally will be small movement and uncertain direction. And so I will tell you as soon as the numbers will be released if we are in a certain, uh, if we are in a tradable situation. So this means for a positive non-farm payroll, we need to see a number larger than 225, 235K and an unemployment rate smaller than 3.8 or, for example, 3.7, 3.6. And for a negative non-farm payroll, we'll need to see a number smaller than 145, 135K and an unemployment rate larger than uh, 3.8, for example, 3.9 or higher. Now, Wednesday, we have had uh, the EDP non-farm payroll, which has been positive. For example, we can see here the EDP non-farm employment chain, which has been positive with a good deviation. But this uh, news on the employment is not always reliable, so uh, because the EDP represents only, even if it is a large portion of the uh, non-farm employment, it's not completely reliable. So we need to wait, really, for uh, these two reports. And furthermore, it is not indicated here on the Forex Factory calendar. Two minutes later, we have the revision of the non-farm payroll for the previous months. And this revision can also create some volatility in the market. So this is why we need to wait for the three reports to be released. So first of all, the non-farm payroll and the unemployment rate. If we have enough deviations, we will know if we have tradable situation or not. And then, in the case of a tradable situation, we will have to wait two minutes later for the revision to see what kind of uh, volatility the market can create. We have furthermore the trade balance uh, on the US dollar. We have also the similar news on the, on the card. So, uh, which represent interesting situation too. This is why on my uh, screen you will see 
some pairs combining these currencies. Of course, the euro, US dollar, the pound, US dollar. The pound is strong today with the good news on the Brexit negotiations this morning. And then two other uh, pairs, one with the pound, with the Aussie because of the news, recent news on the Aussie dollar and the pound card, just in case we have some good news also on the card. So now how do we choose uh, these pairs? We have a few minutes I can explain that. Uh, on our website, uh, you can see here we have a specific page. Its address is, as you can see here, www.maxfreddingsystem.com forward slash newswatch. Uh, we have, first of all, the entire calendar for the week, but not taking all the news. We only mention the news which are really important. And we make a distinction between what we call major news and monitor news. A monitor news is a news which may simply create additional volatility but not directional uh, movement. And major news, in case of a big surprise, can create directional movement. And then, based on the calendar of news, we have a suggestion of pairs to consider every day. For example, for today, the pound kiwi or the pound Aussie, the pound US dollar, the pound Swiss or the pound card. And I have taken, for example, the pound Aussie, the pound US dollar, the pound card, plus the euro US dollar, which is always interesting to trade. However, however, we know that uh, we have had good news on the on the Brexit negotiation, so this is good for euro, this is good for the pound. If we have also good news on the US dollar with the non-farm payroll, this means that a pair like the euro US dollar will not be very interesting to trade because we'll have two strong currencies. Uh, similarly for the pound uh, US dollar. This is why uh, I keep two other uh, two other pairs, so the pound or the end the pound cat, which are in our suggested uh, pairs for today. Uh, all these informations are prepared one week in advance. This means that, for example, this weekend, we will prepare the update, the information for next week in terms of the calendar and in terms of what we call our top 10 uh, list and then the suggested pairs on a daily basis. And so this is a page you can freely access and Below uh, all these uh, information, you have a small text explaining how to interpret these information. If you want to be informed when the page is updated, you can subscribe, you can leave your name, your email address. This, this is completely free, and so you will be informed as soon as the update is made. At the beginning uh, or at the top of the calendar, we have also some general comments in terms of geopoliticals, for example, for situations we have to pay attention because any event in this context can create some movement in the market. Okay, that being explained, presenting the context under which I will consider we have or we have not um, uh, a tradable situation, so let's wait for the news release which will be now in less than three minutes, so in around uh, two minutes, a little more than two minutes now. Uh, are the suggested pairs irrelevant when trading the daily time? Uh, no, not really, because um, you will observe uh, very often some that many pairs come uh, uh, every day. For example, the pound yen. The pound yen uh, is suggested for uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. Uh, the pound kiwi or the pound Aussie uh, appears very frequently. So, so these are pairs you can trade also on a higher time frame. Uh, and to have some pairs, interesting pairs to trade on a daily time frame or on a high time frame, for example, the four hour time frame, the eight hour, the 12 hour, the daily time frame, you can still use these top 10 uh, pairs, which are the pairs which move the best. And, uh, these are extremely appropriate to trade on high time frame. So if you choose, if you had to choose, for example, just two pairs, just take the pound yen and the pound Aussie. And next week you will have an update of that top 10 uh, list. And normally the changes in the list are rare. And so we see regularly the same, the same pairs week after week.
as typically a daily trade would be open for a number of days or even no a, da a, or a daily trade a trade on a daily time may be open for for many days yes i remember a trade i have made on uh, on the euro us dollar a few years ago which lasted uh, more than one year one year and a half on a daily time frame it may be just a few days it may be several months okay because with the max we trade trends in fact so we try to catch trends and to to handle the trade as long as the trade the trend is valid so let's see now the the news release which will be now in a few seconds let me update the calendar regularly so in a few seconds now i will minimize my uh, browser here for the, the the calendar just to see what kind of volatility we have just before the news is released and I will check the time bar chart here and we don't need to run. So we have 134 so this means a negative deviation, a big negative deviation for the non farmers so, so a bad number. So now we need to have a larger number for the unemployment rate. 3.7 we have an improvement in the unemployment rate so we have two contradictory information we have a worse number for the non-farm bill but a better number for the unemployment rate so this is contradictory so we don't have the two numbers in agreement this means that it is not it is not uh, a very good uh, situation for trading so and you can see I will explain in, in a moment but we can see the reaction in the market has been very fast on this where we have had a big spike in the direction opposite to the US dollar and then very quickly a retracement erasing a large portion or totally that spike in, in the same candle or in two separate candles. It is the case for the Euro US dollar, for the pound US dollar, for the pound OZ, for the pound CAD. This shows that uh, in fact we are not in a tradable situation. Let's have a quick check for the CAD. For the CAD we have a better um, employment change and we are still waiting for the unemployment rate uh, unchanged so no uh, no tradable situation again this happens very frequently we, with the non-farm payroll we have directional movement in around one out of three times approximately for the trade balance on the US dollar we have a neutral situation so no deviation at all or uh, irrelevant situation and for the CAD we have a positive deviation but not a big one we have very small number so really nothing exciting uh, today and so this is not the kind of situation we are expecting so what we will do uh, yeah uh, and what happens very frequently uh, when we have a news release and depending on the brokers the spread can widen uh, importantly now uh, when you see the number here for example let's take the pound yen uh, 15 this is not 15 pips okay it is 15 pipettes the numbers are given in pipettes one pipette being one tenth of one pip so when you see uh, one point uh, uh, when you see 15 this means 1.5 pips okay so pay attention to the to the meaning of the uh, of the number. If you want to have a better idea <coughs> on the chart, you can of course display. Let's do that for the euro US dollar. You can display the the ask price and the bid price. I will draw the ask line in uh, red and the bid price would be i think in white but we don't see the difference here uh, uh, sorry let me check if i have asked to draw the bid price uh, show ask line or the ask price so we have in the properties of the chart to check this small uh, area no i'm not sure i have done it correctly let me recheck show ask line okay now it will work and normally we should see in red but the two but because the spread is very small on the euro you see sometimes we see a red line this is the spread between the uh, for the for the pair and you can do that for any pairs so what i will do now because uh, our session lasts um, uh, two hours is i will force a trade 
Forcing a trade means taking a trade uh, which does not fulfill the max criteria. And I have explained what were the max criteria for today with the non-farm payroll. This happens rather frequently with the non-farm payroll. Okay? We do not try to trade any movement we see on our chart. We try to take only the, the good trades, what seems to be the good trade. However, as you know, a very important component of any trading system is the trade risk management. How do we handle a trade in order to minimize the risk when we are trading or to optimize the profit? Both uh, must be combined, uh, of course. As max trader, we privilege the risk aspect of the trade, not the profit aspect. And so this is what I would like to illustrate because we have some time and so Let's, let me recap on the news what we have. So uh, it seems that for me the card presents a better uh, opportunity even if the, the unemployment rate is not uh, in agreement. So I will consider the pound card. Okay? And uh, to handle our trade, I, I would also consider the pound OZ eventually because the, the pound uh, is very strong today. Um, so we, I will consider possibly a trade on these both pair, and I will show you how we consider, how we handle the risk on a trade. Because it will be a forced trade or two forced trades, perhaps, I don't know yet. So we cannot say in advance the issue of this. They may be losing trades, for example. Okay, But in the case of a losing trade, the loss will be very minimum. This is the aim of our rules. And if it is a positive trade, if it is a winning trade, it may be a small profit. Okay? Because we never know how far, in, especially in such a context, how far a price can move. And so, in order to handle our trade, we use an EA, which is called the Max Trade Monitor. And I will load, it is an EA, I will load the default parameters here. Let me check if they are all correct. Uh, yes, and I will explain for a moment uh, the information we have on that EA. So we have two buttons or two windows here. Uh, the first one, the big one, is the information panel and the small one is the button panel. So we have one click button. We have one button to open a trade, one button to close half of the trade, the button to open the trade helps also to make scalings, and we have one button here to close all the remaining open units. Whenever we make an MX, we close half of one trade, and when we make scalings, a scaling is considered as a, a trade. And so, in fact, whenever we open a trade, we consider the trade is made of two units, and each scaling is made also of two units. An MX consists in closing one unit, so half of the trade. And XXX consists in closing the remaining open unit. And we have the information panel. Let me see where is my uh, stop loss. Normally it should be here at around um, 50 pips away from the price. And I will consider uh, only a long trade because our uh, directional indicator indicate uh, an up trend. <clears throat> and I'm waiting for an entry setup. We have, a, we have several entry setups here on the pound card, but we are too close to this max price level, so I will wait for the price to cross this level. So. Uh, Charles, the MTM is not included um, in the in the max itself. Uh, it, it is usable for any level of the max. It is not a free tool. Uh, there is a small charge for the tool. But it is a, okay. Now we have an entry setup, and I will make a buy here, and I will explain the number. So let's make a buy here. Okay, the trade has been opened. You will see in the um, in the terminal panel, the trade which has been opened, and the size of the trade has been opened uh, or calculated automatically based on two information. First of all, the financial risk 
taken for the trade, in this case 1%, and then the size of the stop loss. The size of the stop loss was approximately 30 pips. And so this is the information, in fact, the, uh, the larger panel gives us. It gives us very important uh, data in two columns. The first column gives, the simple column, sorry, gives the information about the trade related to the pairs I'm considering here. And the second column gives the information if we have several simultaneous open trade on different pairs. And so we can open the MTM on several pairs. Let's take, for example, on the Euro US dollar or the pound OZ. Or the pound OZ. Let me close this panel. So let's take the pound OZ here. That way. And then you see one person for the financial risk and then click on OK. And so we have exactly the same uh, button and the same information uh, panel. So, But now the global column uh, will represent the true trade as soon as the trade will be opened on the pound OZ. So I will wait for an entry setup on the pound OZ. And so in this panel, there are uh, important information. For example, there are two lines which are extremely important. The ESL result. The ESL is our emergency stop loss, our red line here. And so if the price reverses quickly and hit the stop loss, this represents the loss we are making. And you will see along the trade how this number will evolve. And then the second number is the line XXX profits. This is the result of the trade, which can be positive or negative. For the moment, it is just a little bit positive. It is the result in percentage if I close the trade at the present price. Okay? And so the other informations uh, are similar data, but relative either in percentages or in pips to the, to, to the op, to the, to the units we are considering in the trade. So, uh, we have, for example, for the pound cat, two open units. They are both open. We have not made a close of any uh, unit. So the open risk on the two units is the same as the total risk. The open profit is the same as the XXX profit uh, or result. And the closed profit is zero for the moment because there are no closed units for the moment. And you will see how Closing one unit and adjusting uh, the stop loss will change these numbers, essentially the ESL result. And so as a max trader, we want to pay attention, first of all, on this line, the ESL result. How can we progressively reduce that risk until we get a risk-free trade, or if we are forced to close the trade with a loss? Now, once we are in a trade, we have at our disposal uh, around 20 exit techniques. And uh, these techniques are of different types. We have exit techniques based on some indicators. I'm illustrating only some of them uh, on our charts here. Uh, we have exit techniques based on a combination of indicators and the price action. We have exit technique based on the price action itself. We have exit technique based on what we call the movement invalidation or the trend reversal, based also on timing consideration and uh, on, uh, of course, trend reversal. So, uh, and the end of the day for uh, intraday trading. And we have for advanced max trader what we call um, discretionary situations. A discretionary situation is a situation when we can be a little more flexible about uh, our exit rules. And this is what I will apply. For example, let me widen, uh, expand this chart here. And on this red candle, or the next one here, this red candle, for example, is an exit setup bar. The price is unfortunately moving against us for the moment, but this red candle uh, specifically is an exit setup bar. This means that we have a situation where we have to consider 
this does not mean we have to do. We have to consider to close one unit in order to reduce the loss of this trade should this trade become a, a losing trade. Uh, but the, the discretionary situation I am mentioning is instead of making my MX here because I have an exit setup here, I will not take that exit. My rule, my discretionary rule is to take an MX only if I have a profit large enough. And the profit large enough means this. The stop loss size for my trade was 36 pips. I want to have a minimum after the spread of uh, 18 pips. And so for the pound card, the spread is around 2 pips. So this means that my first profit must be 20 pips above my entry level. Minimum 20 pips. This does not mean I will have to take my trade as soon as the price will reach 20 pips of profit. Not at all, but it is the level, the minimum level where I will have to consider taking my profit. So here the level was 168.87. So my first profit level will be at 7.9. Oh, seven six, seven nine oh seven six, somewhere in this area. Yeah, approximately that level, and I will change the color of my line here. And so now I will have to be simply patient to wait for either the price to give me another exit setup or to reach my minimum profit level. So. And so we have uh, two ways to trade with the max, either with a time bar chart or with um, um, constant range bar chart. You may use also Renko bar chart, for example. The difference will not be so important in terms of the methodology. In terms of result, there is a big difference. The, the constant range bar chart on the long term provides more profits. But uh, the two approaches are uh, possible. The three approaches with the time bar chart are possible. And of course, the entry setups will depend on the type of chart we are using. We'll have finer uh, setups when we use constant or Renko uh, bar chart. For the pound Aussie, I'm still waiting um, for an entry setup. So let me explain what we have on our chart. We have some typical indicator, so moving averages, for example. We have what we call our momentum line, blue and red balance line. We have our home base channel, and we have that on both type of charts. And then we have two uh, group of important lines. We have this yellow and orange line, which are called our ETF line, uh, which is a very special uh, type of lines we have built for the max. And you can see its feature, uh, the lines, whatever the type of chart you use, uh, these two lines are very uh, regular. When the price is nicely uh, trending, the lines are almost linear and they reverse is very close to the, to the bottom or to the high of the price. And they have a great advantage of ignoring some pullbacks. So they are, um, uh, they are not sensitive to some pullbacks. And then we have what we call the companion indicator or the bias indicator, which is made of two lines. Um, let me again widen this uh, chart here. We have one line in green and red. The green and red line is what we call the slow bias, uh, the long-term bias. And in brown and blue, the fast bias or short-term bias. And so we use them to define when we have a trend direction. And so just to be simple, the color of the slow bias, but it is a little more complex than that, the, the color of the slow bias gives us the direction of the trend. So green when we consider a long trade, red when we consider a short trade. Uh, but sometimes we may anticipate when we have a trend reversal. And so this is why I have taken here a long trade. And then we have these two lines. We may use one of them, which will help us to 
uh, adjusted our stop loss as I will have the opportunity to illustrate uh, today at least on this example. And we can see uh, here that the stop loss is far away from these lines. And so whenever we have a new candle uh, printing on the chart or closing on the chart, uh, as a max trader we check if we can adjust our stop loss because adjusting the stop loss will reduce the risk we have on the trade. And this is especially interesting should the trade be a losing trade. Even if the, the risk per trade is a small risk, 1%, I don't like too large risk per trade. Personally, I even consider that a 2% risk is too large. So I prefer 1% and sometimes even half a percent. And the reason is whatever the winning rate you may have for a trading system, uh, you will experience losing streaks, so uh, several successive losing trades, so losing trade in a row. And even with a 70 or 80 percent winning rate, you may experience losing streaks made of four to six to ten losing trades in a row. And so when you use a two percent risk, then losing trade in a row can create an important drawdown. And we want the drawdown to be minimum. And so in the case of losing trade, we want the loss to be as small as possible. This will help to reduce the amplitude of the drawdown and so to recover the drawdown faster. And so uh, we need a mechanism, a reliable mechanism, to adjust our stop loss. And so uh, we use these lines and we keep our stop loss a few pips below this line. We can see that sometimes the price can, through a spike, uh, reach or cross uh, this and this is why we need to keep the price, uh, the, the stop loss, rather far from this line. Just a few pips, for example, two to three pips in this area. And so if I don't change my stop loss now, despite the fact that these two lines show me that I can do that, my risk will remain at minus 0 0.96%. A little less than 1% because when we calculate the trade size, there is always a round off in the number to take into account the minimum size the brokers allows to trade. And we round off to the smaller number, of course. Um, but now I have the opportunity to adjust the, the stop loss because the lines are going upward, and this will reduce the risk on the trade. Let me show you that. I will adjust the, the, the stop loss in this area, so three, four pips below uh, these lines, and observe carefully how the risk will be reduced. So we are at minus 0 0.96, and if I set my stop loss right here in this area, so the risk will be reduced to minus 0 0.55%. I have reduced the risk by almost half, and I'm still rather safe with my stop loss far enough from the price. And so this means that now if I make a losing trade here, my loss will be comfortable. And when I will have the opportunity to close one unit, banking some profit because I want to have a profit on my, on my first unit, you will see that most probably we will be break even or very close to break even. If the trade must be closed as a losing trade on the stop loss, on the present stop loss, as I have adjusted it, it will be an acceptable loss. Uh, half a percent loss is an acceptable loss. And if we have the opportunity, this loss will be further reduced. Uh, if the price moves somewhat uh, higher, we will see these lines moving higher, giving us the opportunity to reduce the stop loss. So, <clears throat> and so knowing at any moment these two information, the risk we have and how the risk is evolving, and the, the result we have and how that result is evolving, is a great help to handle the trade. In some circumstances, when we have tradable situations, sometimes bar after bar we have to adjust our stop loss. It may be a good idea to consider either the euro US dollar or the pound US dollar, because the news on the US dollar was not uh, uh, good news, all the circumstances were not fulfilled to have a good opportunity. And so the pound is still very strong, so we may consider 
also an opportunity on the pound US dollar or on the euro US dollar. Both are, are strong. <coughs> How much the price has moved since the reversal here? So 30 pips and here 39 pips are approximately the same kind of movement. So I would like to wait for a decent pullback before considering an opportunity here on one of these two pairs. Uh, we may use the max uh, on any on any uh, time frame, okay? On any time frame, so uh, from the one minute time frame up to the monthly time frame, uh, and we have uh, a lot of our max traders who like to trade the four hour time frame. Ah, yeah. Um, this indicator on the top right corner uh, of uh, the chart is what we call, it is a well-known indicator, it's a free indicator, it is called the signal bars uh, indicator, and it gives uh, the value of three indicators, technical indicators on all the time frames. And it is used when we have to consider uh, opening a trade. It is not necessary to have the, the indicator on uh, both charts uh, because it will give exactly the same uh, information. And it's an indicator which works on uh, time bar chart, but on uh, CRB chart or Renko chart, uh, it will give exactly the same info. So we don't need to duplicate on the two charts. And so when the, the, the status in one time frame for one indicator is green, this means that this indicator is bullish. When it is red, uh, it is bearish. Okay? Now let's widen somewhat here the pound cat because it seems that the pound cat and the other pairs are moving. Uh, just to see a little more in detail what is happening. So my minimum level of profit is not too far away. Okay. We can see that at the close of this candle, let me draw a vertical line on this candle. I will use this kind of color and I will use a dotted line. So um, at the close of this blue candle, the two lines have uh, climbed a little bit. And so I can, I can tighten a little bit my stop loss, reducing further my risk on that trade. Now the risk is less than half a percent, okay? And the price is progressively approaching the moment when I will have to consider uh, an exit setup to take some profit. And when the price is nicely trending, we can do that uh, bar by bar. And as long as the lines are climbing, we can we have the opportunity to reduce the, the risk on the trade. Uh, some, I don't understand your last question. What do I use in the max system? What do you mean, do you use it in the max system? You mean the signal bar indicator? The signal bar indicator here? Yeah, yeah, of course we use it, indeed, because <clears throat> let me explain something else. Um, when we have an entry setup, okay, when we have an entry setup, an entry setup, um, an entry setup is a specific pattern the price is doing, okay? And um, we have to check a certain number of conditions. Uh, yeah, indeed, uh, Dan, I see that indeed. <laughs> um, <coughs> we have a certain number of technical conditions to check. These technical conditions are based on what the price is doing in relationship with some of the, the indicators we have on the main chart, but also with some of the indicators we have at the bottom of the chart and the signal bars. These indicators are called tumblers. Um, and we want to have a portion of these tumblers in agreement with the trade, with the entry setup. This is what we call the technical conditions. A second, conditions, uh, second set of conditions we want to check is the risk aspect. So uh, what is the risk, the financial risk we can take on that trade? Uh, sometimes it may be one person, sometimes it may be half a person, sometimes it may be a little uh, 
lower or a little higher. And then we have, and sometimes uh, the, the risk is not appropriate. For example, it may happen for some reason that the stop loss size we are using is way too large. In some circumstances, this happens when the price is excessively volatile. And so we have criteria to tell us, which tell us, okay, at that level of, of the stop loss size, the trade is not worthwhile. And then the third type of conditions is the global context conditions. And today, the global, the global context is made of the, uh, the non-farm payroll. And the non-farm payroll was not in agreement with any trade today. And so when, when we want to have a trade, the three types of conditions must be fulfilled. And so the global conditions not being fulfilled, the consequence is we don't have a trade on uh, mainly on the US dollar pair. But we may have uh, possibly trade on other pair. For example, here, uh, the pound card, even if the conditions on the card for the Canadian non-farm payroll was not appropriate too, okay? And so when we don't have the three types of conditions, we don't have trade. Why these conditions? The technical condition to have the appropriate price pattern, which includes the price action itself, then the risk aspect, because we want to have trade only with reasonable risk, and in fact, the risk level can be whatever you want, provided it is a reasonable risk you feel comfortable with, okay? And then the global context. It makes sense to trade only in agreement with the global context. If the context tells you that the pound is strong, the CAD is weak, you will trade the pound CAD long, it doesn't make sense to short the pound CAD. And so these are all the conditions we want to check uh, uh, for any trades, okay? And then, once we are in a trade, because nothing is 100% sure, even if all the conditions are fulfilled, you have no 100% certainty that your trade will be a winning trade. Because the, the objectives of the big boys who move the market may be opposite. You may have a group of big boys, uh, because of their objective, they want to go long on the pound card, and other for some other reason, perhaps, tactical reasons want to go short, possibly temporarily. And so even so even if all the conditions are appropriate, your your trade may still be a losing trade. But as long as the context does not change, whenever you have the opportunity, you will continue to take your trade. And you may have one losing trade, two losing trade, three losing trade, and then because all these losing trades will be small losses, you will have finally a winning trade which will uh, cover all your losses and will leave you a profit, in fact. And with uh, the max ETF, when we use the max ETF with a small time frame, like the five minute time frame, for each pair we have on average, on the corresponding session of the pairs, we have between four and 10 trades opportunities. And uh, if you take all these trades carefully, the probability is to end your day with a profit is extremely high. You may have a small, uh, few uh, winning trades, or you may have many winning trades, but the probability to end your day with a profit is extremely high. And this is what is important. Some days I can make uh, 10 trades and have only three winning trades and uh, six losing trades and one break-even trade. But the end of the day is profitable. And this is what is important. The winning rate is never important. It's a bad criteria to qualify the quality of a trading system. What is the real criteria for a trading system is, is the trading system making money or not? Okay? <clears throat> and this is why, in fact, the methodology may seem complex, but uh, it's because trading is complex. Trading is difficult. Trading is never easy. It's simple, but never easy. It's simple because you have just to push buttons, okay, to open or to close a trade. But to handle the trade, to recognize when there is a good opportunity, to recognize when there is a risk for your trade, require some knowledge, some experience, and so 
This is why trading is never easy. I have the opportunity to, to tighten a little bit my stop loss here. Let's do that. And you, you will see uh, how the risk here will evolve. Okay, for example, now my risk is one third of one percent. Most cat pair show opportunity right now. I'm not surprised, uh, uh, Dan. Let's have a quick look to the other pairs. Or perhaps we will have a pullback in the pound, US dollar, and the pound, and the euro, US dollar, but we are not on a good place to consider a trade here. Uh, these horizontal lines you see on the chart are what we call, let me illustrate that on the pound card, you see your two white lines. They are what we call max price levels. I define them every weekend, and we may have uh, many lines on the chart. I don't see where are the other. I have to compress the chart. Yeah, we have another uh, here. We have another one a little higher. And we may have them in several colors. The colors are not important. They, they represent simply the time frame I have used to define them, because I analyze these levels based on a multi-time frame uh, approach. And so uh, they represent a possible level of supply and demand uh, in the market, or as some other will call them, uh, support or resistance level. It's not important how we call them. What is important is when we have a level and the price is reaching that level, we can see that for this level here, for this level here, uh, the price may possibly react in a certain way around these levels uh, as a support or as a reason. You can see here when the price has reached that level here, and I have waited for the price to cross that level, the price has made some hesitation. And then the price came back to this level here and made some hesitation before taking off from that level. Uh, similarly, around this level, look how the price has moved on both sides of that level before deciding to break significantly uh, to the upside. Uh, and so we attach a lot of importance to these price levels, and so they are updated every week, every weekend. And they are valid for the for the, the coming week. For example, this, these levels have been defined last weekend, and they are valid up to now. And this weekend, I will update them. And so, some are available for free, some are not free, uh, of course. And if you are interested for the free version, just to see what they look like and how you can exploit them in your own trading uh, methodology, uh, you can write to Craig. You can send an email to Craig, and it will tell you how you can subscribe for the for the free version of the, of these levels. Now, at the close of this last uh, candle, the line have moved a little higher. I can tighten just a little bit my stop loss, reducing a little more my risk. Now, the risk is only 0.3 percent, so a very tiny risk. Now, I will here, just to illustrate uh, the trade risk management here, how to reduce the risk in banking some profit. If the price reaches again this level, this level is not an exit setup, okay? It is not an exit setup. I want to see, to, to close one, to have an exit setup on that level or above that level. But just to show you how closing one unit or half of the trade will participate greatly to the risk reduction here and sometimes to be break even or uh, risk free. So as soon as the price will reach again that level, I will close one unit here just to show you the influence of banking some profit of making what we call a scale out. MX means momentum exit or scale out. And my opinion, but this is just my opinion, and I would be glad to have also your opinion um, in the in the room. And don't feel shy to express your opinion. It's not an opinion. If you want to express it, so that's good. If you do not, that's good too. My opinion why some traders or 
many traders, I should say, have difficulties in handling a trade and begin to panic when the price goes against the trade, and this is always the fear of losing money. But one of the reasons I believe for that type of behavior is because they are blind with the trade. They know their initial risk most of the time, but they don't know how that risk evolves along the trade. Um, and um, whenever I make a live demonstration, um, whenever I make a demonstration to our community with, for example, the strategy tester in our practice session, and we make a risk analysis at some point of a trade, and I say, okay, now the risk is minus 0.30 percent, so less than one third of one percent. Should this trade be closed as a losing trade? Is there a reason to panic? Or because the price now is retracing and we see the profit disappearing progressively, is there a reason to panic? No, because we know in advance now that the loss in the worst case scenario will be a very tiny loss. So there is no reason to panic. And in fact, what we consider the retracement here is something else. Of course, a retracement is a retracement. Uh, the exit rules we have, the exit rules we have to close partially or totally our trade is not a way to try predicting what the price will do. For example, if I say, okay, now my store RSI is showing a divergence uh, that I have to close the trade. Implicitly, this would mean that the divergence predict that the price will continue to go against the trade. This is not what we do. We use our exit setup in a way to quantify the risk when the price is going against it. Of course, when the price is making a top in this long trade and the price is retracing, this is the risk for the trade to become a losing trade, of course. But when is the risk large enough to force us to take a decision to reduce that risk. This is the point. The point is not that the price is retracing, but how much the price must retrace to force us considering the risk for the trade is too high. And this is where our exit techniques are important. Our exit techniques are used to quantify to quantify when the risk becomes too much important, and we have them to consider any way to reduce that risk, okay? And so we have mainly two mechanisms to reduce the risk on any trade, the stop loss adjustment and closing partially a trade. Yeah, but Sam, this is... Um, uh, even little, yeah, I, I understand this is very common to any any trader. Okay, uh, this comes from the fact that um, perhaps unconsciously many traders attach a lot of importance to the winning rate, feeling more comfortable with let's say a 90% winning rate than an 80 or a 70 or a 50% winning rate. Many traders will feel uncomfortable with a 30% winning rate. Am I right? But let me tell you, the winning rate is not the main factor of a trading system. Um, if you read the history, which is freely available now for years on Internet of the Turtles uh, experience in the 80s, their winning rate were only 30%, around 30%. But they have made a fortune. Why? Because when they were in a trend, they were sticking to the trend until the trend was invalidated. And this requires, of course, courage to stay in the trade as long as the trend stays valid, whatever the price makes as retracement. And this is where the trade, uh, the trade risk management is important. And this is why having these numbers is important. Now, knowing that my maximum loss would be minus 0.3%, less than one-third of 1%, one I feel very comfortable with that trade. Okay? Um, what is important in a trading system, or when you have to compare the trading system 
So it's not the winning rate. It's even not the expectancy of the system. If you have to compare, uh, let me check what other pairs are. Okay, nothing uh, important. So I will stay on the pound card. So um, if you want to compare two trading systems, okay, you need to know the expectancy of each system. What is the, ex the expectancy? The expectancy is the, the average trade result. And to have a good evaluation of the expectancy of a trading system, you take, for example, 100 uh, consecutive trades handled correctly based on the system, of course. You will have losing trade, you will have winning trade, but you can define the average result of these 100 trade, you will have so the average trade result. It may be profitable, it may be uh, uh, a losing result. This is an approximation of the expectancy. If the result is positive, this means that on average each trade is profitable. If the result is negative, you have a losing system. And with more trade, your approximation of the expectancy will be more accurate. So you need, first of all, a profitable expectancy. Now, if you have two systems, let me write on the chart here some notes here. Let's suppose we have the system one, system one, and I will use here the yellow color, it will be seen better. At the same time, I observe the chart, and a system two, And let's suppose that the system one has an expectancy of, let's say, 0.5 R, or let's say 1 R, 1 R. I use the Van Tarp notation, R represents the risk. Okay, if the risk is 1%, 1 R means 1% profit. And let's suppose the system number two has a reward to risk ratio of, let's say, 2 Rs. What is the best trading system based on the, the expectancy of the system? Many traders will say the system number two because it has a higher expectancy. But even if the expectancy is important, the expectancy alone is not enough to decide which system is better because there is something which is missing in this, uh, in this case, in this kind of analysis. How many trades the two systems are providing. And if the system number one gives many more trades than the system number two, it may be possible that financially the system number one will be larger than the system number two. Okay? And so the frequency of the trade is also important. So the expectancy times the frequency of the trade is what is important in comparing two systems. <clears throat> now, on the last closed candle, we can see that I cannot adjust. Oh, yes, I can adjust a little further my stop loss. So I will reduce, oops, I will reduce a little more my stop loss. For example, just below this supply, this demand level, reducing my risk to my less than one quarter of a percent. Okay? Now, there is another point, some, um, uh, which is common to many traders, the, the fear to lose a potential profits. Um, if you know the winning rate of your trading system, if you know the expectancy of your trading system, okay, you will know that you will never have 100% winning rate. You will have a certain percentage of losing trades, which is normal in any trading system, so why fearing to have a losing trade? Why fearing to have a losing trade? You can never base a conclusion of the quality of a trading system on just one trade or just a few trades. You need 100, 200 trades to just beginning to have an idea what a trading system quality may be. Okay? 
and have confidence in your system. First of all, have confidence in the market, in its ability to create tradable movement, if you trade trends, uh, of course. Uh, have confidence in the trading system, in its ability to catch these movement, and have confidence, confidence in yourself by practicing in your ability, in your skills to apply your rules correctly. And so, stay indifferent to the issue of any individual trades and consider each trade individually. Once a trade is closed, forget it and go to the next trade. Uh, Aliona, we have had the non-farm payroll. So the non-farm payroll was uh, right uh, on this, uh, in this area, in this area. And so we have waited as usual two minutes uh, after the revision and then um, here on our uh, chart we had the setup on this uh, candle here. Sorry, it was on this candle, but my entry has been a little bit too late because the price was moving rather fast. Okay. Yeah, then uh, taking into account the levels uh, uh, is a good way to have a kind of roadmap, in fact, because you know where the price may possibly reach a, a resistance level or a support level, and so they can help you to better qualify an entry setup, but also an exit setup. For example, it's clear that if the price or should the price resume the up movement and will reach the next level, which is rather far here, okay, we know that at this level we will have to pay attention to possibly close the trade or at least partially. In this case, because we are, I'm not using uh, the scaling technique in a two hours period, it is difficult to use the scaling technique, so uh, probably it will be too close, to but I will be surprised to see the price reaching that level today. <laughs> So in conclusions, if you have confidence in your system, you have to accept the losing trades. You have to stick to the rules. And knowing at any moment where you are in your trade in terms of risk, maximum risk, and uh, profits, potential profits, believe me, this helps a lot because you are not blind with your trade. Especially if you have to consider some partial exit or if you have to consider some scalings. Uh, a scaling will always add risk to your position. And if you have these numbers, you know the risk a scaling will add. And so you can tell, okay, this scaling will be extremely risky or this scaling will be safe. If it is safe, I can take it. If it is extremely risky, I prefer to skip it. Um, Ron, the red and the blue uh, lines, uh, indeed, as you know, uh, is an indicator we use to adjust our uh, stop loss. But as you know, it is not a free one. Okay, this in blue and sorry, in uh, magenta and orange uh, is very similar. It has some differences, but it's a free one. Okay. Now let's see if the price will reach again this level at which I will close one unit. Uh, Ron, if you contact uh, Chris, because we use it a lot when we have a scrolling party dedicated to the sum, which is not so often, <laughs> of course, uh, but we have one we illustrated. But, uh, it is available, I have uh, included in the max primer, and normally when we have a scrolling party with the max primer, we use it, and so normally you should have it, okay? Otherwise, you can contact Chris to have that indicator. Okay, let's observe if the price will reach that level. And let me move my vertical line on the last closed candle. I still cannot adjust my stop loss because the line is flat. 
So uh, between the two lines, the, the orange and the blue line, I always use the most external line to adjust my stop loss. And you see, when the non-farm payroll is not, the non-farm payroll and the unemployment rate are not in agreement with a big deviation on the non-farm payroll, we don't have very nice movements in many pairs. So, uh, and it's really, really a challenge to trade this kind of movement. You have the magenta. Uh, the, okay, this is the free, the, the free one run. Okay, so you don't need to have the other one because they are they are very similar. Okay. Now, if you want to 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 have it, uh, we can give you the link where. But it is not a free one. Okay, there is a price to pay for that because it is a, a, a third a third um, party indicator. Uh, and so you can have the reference if you want to buy it. So Chris will give you or Craig will give you the link. Okay, the price now is at that level. Let's prepare to make an MX when the two rectangles here will concede. I will be okay. Let's make an MX just to show here how the risk will evolve. This is not an exit setup, okay? But just to illustrate uh, what that number becomes when I make an MX, I close one unit here. Okay, you can see uh, a portion of the trade has been closed, and now you see the ESL result. Now I am in a risk-free situation. I'm looking 0.22% profit, even if the price reaches this stop loss. And I can show you in the trade terminal panel that the trade has been divided by two. In the account history, we can see the the, the one unit closed. Remember, the trade had a size of four mini lots. I have closed two mini lots here by making an MX. So this is a lot profit. And in the window here, you have the, the open risk. So the remaining risk on the remaining open unit. So zero ten percent. But the, the close profit on the closed unit is thirty two zero thirty two percent. So my Locked profit now is the difference between both, so uh, plus 0.22 percent. If I close the trade now, my profit would be 0. around 70 percent profit. Okay, and so you see the combination of both the stop loss adjustment and the trade risk. So the unit uh, management has a fast impact on the way to handle the trade. And now when we are sure to lock some profit, we can feel complete, completely comfortable. One way to close the second remaining unit will be either when we have another exit setup or wait when the trend will reverse. Okay? Or wait when the price hit the stop loss. Because, of course, at some point, if I adjust my stop loss, I can tighten a little bit my stop loss now here because the line is climbing here. And you can see I'm looking a little more profit. It may happen for any reason that the price will make a fast spike to the downside and hit the stop loss. Okay? So there are several ways to close the last units. So. And when you are in such a situation and the price is retracing, of course, what will happen is a decrease in the potential profits, but you can no longer have a losing trade here. Okay? Well, I should never say always. You can, you can no longer have a losing trade. No, I should never say that. Because uh, a black swan can always happen. This sometimes happens. Uh, in my trading career, I have see, seen it uh, uh, twice, so a flash crash and the decision in 2016 or 15, I don't remember which year it was, with the Swiss National Bank unpegging the Swiss franc with the euro. For those of you who remember, so we have seen in the euro Swiss pair uh, a drop of around 1,000 pips in a few seconds. It has been very fast. When you are in such a situation, even your stop loss cannot protect you. And so but this happens so rarely, so we can forget that kind of situation. And so now we can feel extremely comfortable in the way to stay in that trade, whatever the price will do. Okay? And uh, if 
we are still um, in the session because time is flying, I will show you where normally I should have made my first MX. Okay, if the price moves enough, I will show you where my MX should be. But I have taken it here above my minimum profit level just to show you the impact on the trade risk management. Okay? Yeah, indeed, Dan, we have an, an almost TT rejection. The price is progressively reaching that TT. Ah, Abraham, this is a, a complex question. Sometimes uh, it may be a few seconds. Sometimes it may be a few hours. It depends. It depends of the clarity of the, the news. So when the news is clear, sometimes a few minutes after the news release, you can take your trade. When the big boss takes a long time to analyze the news, because sometimes it's a complex situation, uh, because other events may uh, be taken into account, and so it can take several hours. And so my advice is, Always observe, always observe the time bar chart here. And when the time bar chart, you, you see the kind of volatility there was here with that red bar and blue bar when the news has been released. You see these two long bars. And so this indicates a lot of volatility. And then the volatility has stayed for one, two, three more bars. And after three, these three bars, so 15 minutes, the volatility has decreased and now we are seeing normal bars. So when you see a normal volatility, then you can consider to, to take a trade if you have an appropriate entry setup. Okay? Concerning the spread, the spread will increase around the news release, but the increase of the spread will, um, will not last a long time. It's a question of a few seconds, generally. Um, so... The spread alone is not a reliable information, but indeed when you have to open your trade, check the spread. If the spread is too large, wait for the spread to be a little smaller, okay? So let's see where is my blue line here. Okay, I can tighten a little bit my... Oh, now the external line is this one. It is this one, the orange one is coming. So I can tighten my stop loss. Oops right on this level, which was my entry price level. This means that my second unit now, you can see that open risk, my second unit, I have one uh, open unit, is break even. And so this means that now, for every adjustment of my stop loss, this second unit will also participate to increase my locked profit. I remember one year, uh, Abraham, uh, with the non-farm payroll, I have had to wait four hours before, after the news release before having a clear situation in many people. Four hours. It was a long time period. Okay, here we may have, perhaps at the close of this red candle, an exit setup, but we have to wait for the candle to close. Okay, this is indeed an exit setup bar based on our exit criteria. And my price level to close one unit would have been around this level. So just a little, or exactly at the same level, but this is a coincidence where I have closed my unit previously but only if the price comes on this level. Why? Because when we have an exit setup, so an exit setup is a candle fulfilling some criteria, okay? So we have exit criteria. And so once we have an exit setup, we have to define an exit price level, which was around this level here, approximately the, the same level as my previous uh, MX. So around this level. And so if the price comes to this level, this is where I would have made my 
MX normally. If the price can, if the price does not follow through to this level, I would keep my unit as an open unit. Okay. <clears throat> and so you will see if the price resume to go upward, this orange line now will begin to climb to helping me to reduce further my stop loss. But damn it was a coincidence, okay? <laughs> it, it is a pure coincidence. <laughs> no, I have not a crystal ball to see, <laughs> to see the future. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> now, we have a specific situation here. This candle, which is a blue candle, resumes the up movement. But the condition for the exit still exists. We call such a situation for uh, the price resuming the movement, but the exit condition still existing, a ratchet condition, helping us to fine-tune our exit level somewhere to this level here. So to have a better exit level, and this red red candle has achieved that level. So normally I would have made my MX here, okay? but really not too far away from the, the exit I have made. Um, yes, sir. no, it is not, the MTM is not, so max trade monitor is not included in the max course. It is a, a tool we have developed for the max, but it is not a free tool. There is a price for the tool, but the price is uh, an acceptable price. Uh, I don't understand uh, your question or your comment, Abraham. So, but if is a spike, we have to wait for a retracement to get a setup primer speaking. So, what is your question? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand your your your, your comment. Uh, oh, perhaps no. We don't necessarily need to wait for a pullback before or a retracement before having an entry setup. Uh, the, the, the pattern is more nuanced than that. Uh, you know, for example, for the Remo or for the Safe and Perfect Mo setup, the Safe and Perfect Mo at the beginning of a new uh, ETF trend. Yes, we need to wait for a pullback, but for a Remo, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, yes, indeed, in relationship with the news, uh, I always prefer to wait for a pullback, indeed, indeed, always. Why? Simply to have a better price entry. Because, <clears throat> in fact, when we have a tradable news release, we see, let's suppose it was um, a very negative news on the card we would have seen a spike to the upside. This is the first step of the effect of the news release. That spike may be 50, 100 pips if the deviation is, or the surprise is a very big surprise. And then we see a retracement. That retracement may be an important one. It may be on the same candle or it may be on the following bars. And then the price will resume the up movement and this is the movement we, we want to trade with the market. This is the movement I call the fundamental movement. Uh, so three steps. A first spike in the direction of the news, a retracement, and then the resumption of the fundamental movement. Sometimes the first spike is preceded by another movement uh, in both directions, which may be speculative movement. This sometimes uh, happens. But this is valid only. This is valid only when we have a big surprise in the news release. It was the case with the non-farm payroll, but but uh, the unemployment range, the unemployment rate was not in agreement, and so the non-farm payroll has not provided a tradable situation. So, okay. Now, at the close of this last red candle, I still cannot adjust my stop loss. Now, we have with that uh, red, no, we have no new uh, exit setup for the moment. And you can see that the fact that the price is retracing, of course, does not affect for the moment the lot profit here. 
it affects the profit we can take now if we close the trade now, but it does not affect the result on the stop loss. And the aim now is to increase that number as much as possible. At the close of this red candle, despite it is a red candle, I will be able to tighten a little more my stop loss. You see here, because my stop loss is still going upward. And so it is here, I can tighten it just a little bit, not too much. So looking a little more profit. Yeah, it depends on the news, indeed. Now, in fact, when we use the sum version of the max with the constant range bar chart, the, the pullbacks are more frequent. Even small pullbacks may be appropriate to take. To, this is what I have made here in the pound chart, even if the conditions were not appropriate to take a trade. So I have taken a forced trade just to illustrate our uh, uh, trade risk management. But with constant range bar chart, we have many more pullbacks we can count on to, to have good entry setups. What some traders have a tendency to do also, and some of you may perhaps recognize in that type of behavior, is when they have some profit in a trade and they begin to see the price retracing, they tighten their, their, their stop loss uh, too close to the price itself. And very often, if some volatility is increasing, they are stopped out making, of course, a small profit, the minimum profit they wanted to do, but very often they observe that they have missed the best portion of the trend. This is why when you have to consider tightening your stop loss, stay away from the price, far away from the price. It doesn't matter if you have a stop loss size of 20 pips, 25 pips, 30 pips, 50 pips, if the size of your trade is um, calculated correspondingly to your stop loss size. It's not the distance in pips or the size in pips of your stop loss which is important by itself. It's the size of your trade. And of course, if you use a larger stop loss, your trade size will be smaller. What is important is the financial risk you have to consider for your trade. So keep a stop loss large enough to avoid these spikes, these spikes uh, touching too frequently a too tight stop loss. This will help you to keep your stop loss rather far away from the price and this will increase the probability to close your trade with a profit. Now look on this last blue candle. My line here has climbed on this level. I can tighten a little bit my stop loss this way. Okay, I stay a few pips below this level and now I'm looking almost 0.4% profit. And I don't see for the moment a tendency for a trend reversal in our bias directional indicator or companion indicator. <clears throat> you see here the price is reaching these two lines. Uh, the price is now very close to this one. This is why we have to keep the, the stop loss rather far from that level in order to increase the probability for the price not touching the stop loss and the price to uh, resume the up movement. Now, if the price continues to retrace and hit the stop loss, okay, the price hit the stop loss. But we are looking some profits and this is what is important here at this point. I will leave that blue line on the chart. This will remind me where I have taken, why I have taken my MX here. <clears throat> when you use the sum version of the max, even a small movement of 15 to 20 pips 
uh, allows to make a profitable trade. And because we are able to use rather small uh, stop loss, stop losses, so the rework to risk ratio is interesting to do. And so it's not so difficult, it's not so difficult to, tr to make every day, and this is just with one pair here, but you can trade two, three pairs simultaneously. Uh, it's not difficult to make a minimum profit of half a percent, half a percent per day. If you are able to make half a percent profit every day, I don't say it's easy, okay, because you need to master the rule, the concept completely. Uh, I don't say it will be every day possible, but the probability is very high. And so if you are able to make on average half a person profit every day and you trade every day of the year and you compound your result, at the end of the year you triple your account. You triple your account at the end of the year with just half a person profit every day. And when you trade, for example, the, the London session, because we have to accept the market as it is the best opportunities happen during the London session. So starting around the London open and ending around the London close. Uh, this is the time period, at least for all the pairs containing either a European currency or an American currency. So we have two American currencies, the CAD and the US dollar. We have three European currencies, the pound, the euro, the Swiss. And so this gives us a lot of pairs to consider trading. And so most of the opportunities will happen during the London session. And so uh, uh, if you do that with the pairs moving the most, as indicated in our top 10 pair list here, BDV making half percent, even one percent per day is way, way easier. I don't say it's always possible, but it's way easier. It doesn't make sense to trade a pair. Let's, let's reconsider. So we can let the price moving here. Um, let's consider, for example, a pair. Uh, it is not taken here. But let's suppose the OZ Kiwi the OZ Kiwi, which is very often a pair which has the least or the smallest average daily range. And so its average daily range is often around 50, 50 pips, with an average daily range in dollars very, very small. It doesn't make sense to trade that pair when you have a pair like the pound yen making 140 pips per day on average with a very a larger range in dollars. And so when you have to trade, choose more specifically, if you are a trend trader, choose the pairs which are trading, okay? Um, this is more difficult to say some how many opportunities when we trade the daily uh, time frame. Um, because it depends of or it depends on the fundamental circumstances. Sometimes we have no new opportunities during weeks, sometimes during months, because the pairs we are trading are engaged in uh, very large trends. And sometimes we may have uh, one, two, three opportunities in the week. It, it's extremely variable. Because when you trade the daily time frame, in fact, you trade more in line with the fundamentals, with the fundamentals moving the time frame on a, on a higher time horizon. For example, the evolution of the interest rates, the evolution of the, the, the inflation, uh, the evolution of the GDP, and uh, so on. Now, in order to know if uh, there are opportunities, we have a specific tool uh, which is an EA, but I don't think I have it on this platform. Let me see if I have it. Um, no, I don't think. We have, um, 
an indicator which is called the Max ETF dashboard. No, I don't have it on this platform. Uh, this is a platform I have activated uh, two days ago, uh, which is a broker. I don't advise a broker, but it is a broker who doesn't freeze the platform during the news release. But next time I, I will show it. So we have uh, an indicator which is called uh, the Max uh, ETF dashboard. We can apply to any pairs and to any time frames. And so we can have a quick look when we have a potential, I say a potential, a possible entry setup uh, on this pair. So we can have a list of pairs. We define the list uh, in a parameter. We define the different time frame. We can use several time frames. And so we can apply that dashboard, for example, on the daily time frame. And so whenever we will have, especially here, these two ETF lines crossing, this may be a, a possibility for a new trend starting. This is not always the case. For example, here we are in an uptrend because our bias um, uh, directional indicator is green, but whenever we have a cross to the downside here, or here, or here, or here, this is not the beginning of a new downtrend, but at least we are alerted that something may happen. And so with, the, with that dashboard tool, so it's really easy to be informed of what is happening. So for the moment, the lines are on this level. We, we have to, even if they appear to be uh, downtrending here, so we have to consider they are at this level. I cannot adjust my stop loss, so I need to stay far away. So I will stay on this level. So we, we have some tools helping us to be alerted when we have some situations at least to analyze. But with around 10 pairs, so it's frequent to have at least at least one opportunity per week. 10 pairs, 15 pairs, so depending on our top 10 list. And I say top 10, but most of the time it contains 14 pairs. Uh, this week it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But sometimes uh, it contains 14 pairs. It depends, in fact, of the minimum size. We want to have a minimum dollars, um, uh, the uh, average daily range in dollars. Because, in fact, it's not the pips which are important, but the dollars we are able to make. And we can see in this case that, for example, here you have um, this the euro card has the same range in pips as the pound US dollar, but the pound US dollar makes more money than the euro card by a large amount, around 20%. So this is really the dollar's range which is important. Simply because the peak value is not the same for each pair. So we will have to wrap up this session in around uh, 20 minutes, so now. Any questions about what I have shown and explained today? I still cannot adjust my stop loss as long as they will not appear. I cannot adjust them, adjust it, sorry. Any questions? Uh, this is true with the 8 hour, 12 hour being in the UK and working away from the chart. Not sure how well a lower time frame would work. Worth exploring though. Yeah, in some, this is a very important question you are mentioning. In fact, uh, sometimes I read some comments on some trading forums, and I always see the same question, what is the best pair to trade, what is the best system to trade, what is the best indicator to trade, what is the best time frame to trade. In fact, there is never such thing like the best thing to trade, okay? And particularly, there is no best time frame. The difference between a higher time frame and a smaller time frame will be the frequency of the trades. However, if you have another activity as many traders, and there is nothing wrong with that, okay, you will have, if you want to, you will have to choose the time frame which better fits your time constraint. Because I would be surprised your 
except if you are your own boss, of course, I would be surprised that your boss would agree for you to trade on your while you are working in his company, in his office or in his factory or, or so on. Okay? And so you need to choose the time frame which best fits your own time constraint. Uh, are you turning on a two-minute chart? Uh, and this is not a two-minute chart. It is indicated M2, okay, but it is not a two-minute chart. It is a constant range bar chart. And it happens in uh, MetaTrader that when you create a constant range bar chart or a tick bar chart or a Renko bar chart, you have to specify a pseudo time frame. And you cannot use the standard time frame M M1, M5, and so on. And so typically we can use M2, M3, M4, but it is it is not a two-minute chart, okay? It is not a two-minute chart. Which time frame are you using now? I can see it. No, I, I'm, I'm using no time frame. The characteristic of uh, constant range bar chart is it's not time dependent. It's price movement dependent. Okay? Yeah, indeed, uh, Dan, if I close now, I make approximately 0.7% profit, so no problem. I, I could close the trade now. Okay? There is no problem for that. Uh, you can, if, once you have enough practice, in fact, in your trading, and you know that you can achieve easily half a person profit per day on average, for example, whenever in, in a specific trade you achieve something like 0 0.7, 0 0.8%, one person, you can decide to close your day, to close your trade, and to close your day, because you have made your day even more than what you were expecting to. And this will compensate sometimes for days when you will make less less results. Okay. Um, ah, the range is calculated automatically. Uh, low. It is calculated automatically uh, every day by the indicator we are using to create the uh, the constant range bar chart in a way to optimize the size of the range. Because um, using a Renko bar chart, using a constant range bar chart is one thing, but defining its correct size, it's another thing. And so the size is based on the volatility, it's based on the daily range, or the daily, uh, average daily range, and so on. So in such a way to optimize the size of the bar each day, okay? The time range bar settings, since it is not a two minute. Uh, let me show you how it is generated. So, so the, this is an indicator which is applied to the time bar chart, okay? And in the indicator list, let me show you the parameters, how this is made. So where is my window for the parameter? Oh, it is here. It is hidden by the question area of GoToWebinar. Uh, where is it? It is here. Edit. Okay. Here. You see, in the parameter, we select the type of chart, for example, range bar, and then here we select the offline chart ID or identification, and I set two. I could have chosen three, four, but not a number corresponding to the standard um, time frame. Because uh, the indicator with a constant range bar chart creates another history files which needs to have a name. And the name must not be in conflict with the standard time frame. Okay? Yeah, of course, we explain all these details in the SAM course, of course. But now, uh, I have chosen for today the, the SAM level of the max just to have more opportunities to show because in the time bar chart, the opportunity to trade is, way sm is smaller and in a two hours period, it's difficult really to, to, show, to show something. We are not scalp traders. We don't scalp the market, okay? And so, 
I better prefer to illustrate with the sum than with the time bar chart. But uh, the, the methodology is exactly the same. The rules are the same. The entry setups are the same. The exit setups are the same. The way to handle the trade as I have illustrated today is exactly the same. So everything is the same, except that with a constant range bar chart, we have more details, smaller details in the price movement. Okay? And uh, to complement my uh, to complete my uh, answer, uh, Ang about the CRB charts, constant range bar chart. Uh, there are a lot of indicators which are free for many of them. Some are not free. Uh, you can find them uh, with Google. It's not it's not difficult. When you use uh, free indicator, you have to be sure that the indicator uh, is coded perfectly, and so you, it's better to test it first a lot on a demo platform, not on a live platform. Okay? Yeah, uh, indeed, all the indicators we have, and we provide all the indicators, we provide the templates also uh, in each course we have. So we have the max primer course, we have the max standard course, I should say the max ETF primary course, the max ETF standard course, the max ETF advanced course, and the max ETF sum course. And so uh, every indicator, some of them are standard indicators of MetaTrader, some of them are custom indicators, but we explain in great detail what each indicator's custom indicator is. For example, I explain in great detail our bias directional indicator, uh, where it comes from, how we have modified it. Uh, we, I explain what are these lines for the stop loss adjustment. Uh, I explain what are these ETF lines. And so everything is indeed explained in detail. In details, sorry. I still cannot, oh, perhaps just a little bit, but not too much. I can adjust my stop loss a little further that way. Looking a little more profits on the stop loss. And you can see that these lines to adjust the stop loss sometimes even climbs when the price is retracing because it takes into account the momentum and the volatility of the price. No, we don't have a live trading room. We don't have a live trading room, uh, Ang, because we have for that a legal issue. Uh, here in Europe, uh, with the, in the European uh, Union, uh, in fact, not in Europe, in the European Union, uh, to have a live trading room, we need to be licensed. Uh, everyone who, is, who live in the European Union and who have a live trading room without a license is not doing that legally. And uh, this creates big problems, so because it is not easy to obtain that license. It's not easy to obtain that license, unfortunately. And this is why sometimes you... No, I will not get uh, a license, uh, Ang. Uh, it, it is not easy. It is not easy to obtain it. First of all, uh, there are two ways to get a license. The license gives you the right to animate a trading room, a live trading room, to give uh, trades, live trades, uh, to give some uh, trading or investment advices, to trade other people money if you want to create, for example, a hedge fund. So that license gives you all these rights, okay? But to obtain that license, you have either to follow a four-year course, four-year course in a specific European um, educational institution which depends on the banks, or you need to have uh, several years, around 10 years uh, experience in a bank or uh, in a broker house. And so uh, at my age, I'm 61 now, uh, I do not want to follow that path, okay? So, no, I will not get a license. However, what I am doing, what I am thinking, is to find a way to... 
uh, to help traders to, to have their own trade by helping them to have their trade in some way. But I need to check that this is a legal right to do that. Yeah, they control the gates and process, indeed, indeed. Oh, you know, on the old continent, in fact, any subject around money is a taboo. And when you want to penetrate in that area, you have a lot of obstacle around you. And so, because the banks want to control everything, everything, the bank and the central banks. Okay, you can see that now the price is no longer moving, the price is ranging, uh, in fact. Um, in around one hour, 50 minutes now, we will be at the Frankfurt close. In around a little less than two hours, we will be uh, on the London close. So we may see st still some movement uh, before the, the Frankfurt and the London close. But uh, you have seen that here, the movement after the entry was not a big movement. Okay, it was a movement of around 30 pips. But when handled carefully, when handled handled carefully with the max rule, you can still catch a profit and even a decent profit on these kind of movements, okay? <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> uh, Ang, um, when, I, when I have begun to trade with the max, it was in 2008, in 2008, after I have uh, taken the course with Jim, Dr. Jim Pruitt, who was the, the creator of, of the max. Unfortunately, he passed away in mid-2009, and his uh, collaborators, assistants, so Chris and Craig, have asked me to continue the course. And I have, I have accepted, of course, because it was an honor to do that for me. Uh, but at the beginning, I remember I have shown some um, excerpt of my statement with trades I was making, and it was a live statement. So I don't know how. But one guy in the room where I was showing my statement has complained to the tax administration. And I have had a, I have had a lot of problems with the tax administration, even if I was perfectly clean. And it took me several months to solve that problem. And so I have decided I will no longer show my trading result. The problem, uh, these kind of problems are a nightmare. Believe me, it's a nightmare. Okay? And one, not, and one, and one need not be a white-eyed conspiratorialist. <laughs> oh, it's not a problem of uh, plots or conspirationalist uh, opinion, uh, Ralph. The reality is the reality, and so we have to do with that, and we have to accept that, unfortunately. And so, well. But if there is a way, I will find a way someday to, to help our traders, at least our max traders. So, I think if you have no final questions, it's a good point to wrap up here. So, I thank you very much for your participation today, for all your questions. They, they, they were interesting questions, so I hope you have enjoyed uh, the presentation so I have made, especially to show you how we handle the, the trade risk uh, once a trade is open in order either to minimize the potential loss on a trade or to optimize, as it is the case now, to optimize the potential profit we can make on a trade. If you have any further questions later, feel free to send your question to Craig. Craig, I think, has mentioned uh, his um, uh, email address. You can always contact us. There is no problem. We try to answer every question. And so uh, for that, uh, I thank you very much again for your participation. Um, yeah, yeah, Ralph, thanks. Uh, indeed, I'm, uh, I'm nicely recovering from my uh, surgery. And I'm making, I'm making my workout every day without any uh, exceptions. And this helps uh, a lot, too. To recover, and fortunately, fortunately, 
my doctor has given me the authorization to trade again. So uh, starting this week, but this week I have been very, very busy to trade. But next week I will restart uh, trading live with my own account. And I'm really glad for that because I was really missing that. So, But the surgery was a priority and so now everything went right and I have received a lot, a lot of kind messages and so I thank you very much for all these messages. So thank you very much for your participation. Feel free to ask questions to Craig. Craig has posted his um, email address. So again, thank you very much and so see you next time for another event uh, or perhaps in one of our Max courses. Bye everyone and in the meantime, take care.